It's Bernie Goldmark with a quick review of the Sunday papers on June 17, 2010, 2012. Starting with no peace of mind from Spectrum, one Iraq victims. Well, it's a victim. It's a veteran of Iraq. It's a Pulitzer Prize winning series on Brian Scott Ostrom. The series is done by uh, Craig Walker. Looking at your man getting back, committing suicide, trying to commit suicide, domestic stress at home, working through it like all good Marines would in places where you had to be silent and deadly. Maybe it's physical, anything at all that can bring back some kind of sanity to a memory of time time well served. Fourth of July is coming up. A lot of veterans will be thinking about service and time. Sunday Times, Sunday Business Post, two uh, newspapers I look at in Ireland. www.insideview.ie is where I blog. You can catch up with what I'm saying at audioboo.fm, stroke talk called. Inside the papers, Brad Pitt's there. Angelina Jolie's there. Perfect cousins are talked about. This is interesting. Rue Britannica. Debt used to make us great. The article is about austerity. It's a really good long read. Comparing the Americans, who used to be 20-25%, of the income what a Chinese gets for um, annual salary, now down to five times what it gets. The two countries compared. The present system of government finance is, to put it bluntly, fraudulent. There's more talk about that in the Sunday Business Post editorial section. We'll get to that here in a minute. Rory Quinn, who's the Minister of Finance, is hoping that things like revised use of e-portfolios and that devices in the hands of each student becomes a talking point and a marching orders for all the big players in Ireland, including Liam Donahue of Apple. He talked to them, saying we want some free and cheap and easy stuff. In the meantime, an article about Google turning evil, John Aldridge says there's concerns that all of them, Apple, Facebook, and Google, are doing stuff. So the Information Commission Associate, or Information Commission's office in, in England are looking at things that Apple's doing right now with a better than street view piece of technology. Intrusive 3D is what they're calling it. Military grade aerial camera imagery for your life. The parent trap is part of a life story in Ireland. Sarah McInerney has taken on the question because in the back of some economic and social research institute studies, it appears that it might be better off, people might be better off on 30,000 euro a year not to hold down a job because the cost of crashes and just commuting is, is worse than just taking down social welfare payments. Richard Toll, Toll has a piece of research that was pulled from the ERSA, RSA, ESRA's website because it was contentious, showing something anecdotally a lot of people are pointing out, like Tom Barry of Fine Gael, T TD said he was offering a job of about 30,000 euro a year, 100 CVs came in, only two came from those who were unemployed. There's a message in that, unemployment might pay. Lance Armstrong may have to pay for some um, flouting of drug laws, or maybe not, as uh, the profile points out. Lance's story was either going to be the best in the history of sport or the saddest. Interesting to see where that's going to go. Brendan Walsh writes an article about yakademia. It's basically a type of newspeak rendering conversation about university education and problematic words like managers uh, using outcomes, measurability, and quality assurance all feature taking away some of the experience of um, tenured behavior in universities. Patty Cosgrave, known for such events as the New York Pub Summit uh, recently, got engaged to his uh, fiance, uh, actually proposed to her, his girlfriend, long-term girlfriend, Faye Dinsmore. And if you follow her on her blog or her Facebook page, you'd be among the 265,000 people. She has 14 um, siblings, so no trouble for bridesmaids and bridegrooms. Sunday Business Post, slamming some things, pointing out some other things of, of interest. I'd like the Sunday Business Post, point of record. Um, the ERSI comes in, that's your professor, looking at research figures. Bottom line, people generally prefer to work, but his research suggests that about 10% of the population is better off if they don't work, just get the money. Irish officials' emotional reluctance to face reality, so it says an editorial. This is interesting. Lots of stuff happened in the meltdown of Ireland. Serious fundamental policy errors. Uh, are pointing to another thing people need to be thinking about. That is, there's a major emotional unwillingness of senior policy makers to imagine possibly the whole solvency of the state might be called into question with the way finances are going right now. Another problem identified by a lot of research, well, all the way back decades ago by Professor Joe Lee, is Irish public life is not so much anti-intellectual but sub-intellectual instead of valuing independent thought. 
what people do is they say you're not wearing the green jersey or you're written off as not being a team player when you point out some back uh, a backstory or different evidence uh, to another conclusion. And finally, all these key people in civil service, central bank, commercial banks, all these key leaders part responsible for driving Ireland off the cliff of financial prosperity still hold the same kind of jobs and positions of responsibility they've always had. You wonder, has anybody learned? Picture perfect. Large technical piece by Adrian Wecker in Sunday Business Post. He chooses the Sony Xperia S as the best camera phone in the market. I would agree with him. We're using that technology now in this, uh, this video clip. He also cites the HTC at 1X, Samsung Galaxy S3, and the Nokia Lumi 800. Adrian a asked some other questions too concerning high tech pandering to our non desires. He claims video, mobile video calls aren't a big deal. He obviously hasn't, doesn't like FaceTime or use it to cross the oceans with generations uh, on both sides of the, of the call. Physically, social apps, he doesn't find very much of a good reason for that. And on that, we run counter to development of near field communications. QR codes don't seem like much of, uh, much of, doing, much of doing anything. I've used QR codes for a lot of things like buying plants that were first germinated in Holland and Skype and Google Hangouts doesn't go for those video connections as well. We're using both QR and Google Hangouts. www.insideview.ie will show, up, show whether we've got the right thoughts in mind next semester academically. Primetime Investigated, a comment by Michael Haney, a senior producer, who now retired from RT, points out some really important things about the fact that even though Eva Cavanaugh might have got the story wrong and libel Father Kevin Reynolds, she deserved better treatment. The Broadcasting Act requires the BAI to afford fair procedures to parties, and he found, Heaney found that, look, Aoife's written submissions and rebuttal were passed off with just, ah, okay, give your time, off we go. Her good name uh, has basically been drugged through the mud without maybe natural justice. Good point he raises about how that works. Ad awards, well, some of them are being given out. Tanya Bonatti is part of the practitioners who Part of the Advertising Standards Authority of Ireland want to do is they want to get, um, they, they want to actually try to get social media under its remit. So those people that are involved in advertising awards are probably going to be under the remit of the Advertising Standards Authority of Ireland. All the social media guys are doing their thing right now. Might find that being interesting to have to conform to some kind of a industry standards. Travel books are coming to the world of the app. Catherine Mahoney writes a diary as a new media newbie. She's kind of despondent. Travel books, traditional ones, are in decline. The bookseller magazine says they're down by 11% this year. Things like Carl Pilkington's An Idiot Abroad, which sold 170,000 copies in Berlin, in Britain. Um, Catherine would like to have these kind of guidebooks because they provide context and a source of entertainment for your holidays. You get the same thing on an iPad, though. Catherine, maybe it's just up, up marketing yourself. That is to say, get the tech. Well, I'm with you on the fact that good books make a fun read. Elena Regan finds something about older, better, and back in business. She finds a pilot program for senior entrepreneurs in Wicklow rolled out nationally under the European program called Senior Enterprise. Sheila Daly is the chief executive of Wicklow Enterprise Board, running a boot camp in Port Leash, late, latter part of the month. Over 50 entrepreneurs who know their pensions aren't going to be enough are attracted to that. Hey, other things about advertising standards. Jennifer O'Connor talks about Twitter, where nothing's really private anymore. She draws into question a lot of the civility or tones of civility, which might be there. And part of civility is keeping things private. It's one of the reasons why I'm kind of backing away from Twitter recently. Time to make an exhibition yourself, though. Something I'd tweet about is this. A really cool exhibition currently running in Farmley, where you can make your own art. So your presence turns the work into a self-portrait, one you can control by manipulating, moving your arms, waving it, waving around. Beautiful, intelligent, and fun. Gets the audience thinking about what abstract art might be. It's called Hall of Mirrors. It's in Farmley in Phoenix Park until July 22nd, then moves to the Limerick City Gallery of Art in August. Travel is something you can do. Get on your pickup truck, go across the states like we did. And the Sunday Times Magazine are recommending the Four Corners trip from Denver, Colorado. Staying overnight in the Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado Springs, I'd recommend that. National Petrified, the Petrified Forest National Park, cool. Flagstaff, we went to the North Rim ourselves in the Grand Canyon. Meteor Crater, Arches National Park. And they even recommend Joshua Cadison's Elton-esque Easy Rock Tracks when making that like nearly 4,000 mile loop there. We went through Nevada on our run through it. If we do it the next time, we'll have a tent. It'll look like this. It's actually a camper van. 
but it's a tent sold by firebox.com for 310 euro and we'll carry our iPod touch and our iPhone inside of a thick as a brick think geek retro iPhone iPhone case we drive Johnny Ive nuts thinkgeek.com is where you can buy it for 41 euro we got some cleanup to do in the back garden tomatoes to grow weeds to weed sparrows to feed Check out the flicker.com stroke photo stroke Irish eyes for where I am and how I'm doing it. Bernie Gobach, top quote on Twitter saying, thanks for watching and listening. Bye for now.